Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Apotheosis. Today I'm going to be going over three modules, the potions, villagers, and gardens. Each of these has a little something extra to add to your world. But before we get too carried away with some of these previous things, just to go back one step, if you haven't seen episode three, I highly recommend you do. It covers a lot of the enchanting basics. There was something that I had overlooked and should mention. It's just two brief items, the regular skulls that you could potentially get in world as well as a wither skeleton skull can add a certain percentage of quanta to your enchanting abilities. This will increase the different things uh, appropriately. If you put down one or more, you can then just add it instead of bookshelves. And this also applies to candles, whether it be any color or uh, even any quantity doesn't matter you just need to have at least one in the space and it will increase an arcane or arcana version by a little tiny bit so you can actually just have it look uh, a little bit more appropriate that was all just a little quick uh, recap of something that i had missed in the enchanting chapter with that out of the way let's get into some of these other modules now the remaining modules of this mod are actually just kind of smaller parts so we're going to tackle the biggest one first and that is the one of potions. It can be extremely strong because it can give you a whole bunch of different potion effects permanently if done properly. So let's go over the new effects of some of the potion chapter. Bleeding is actually, in my opinion, not part of this. I'll be covering this as part of the village module a little later in the video. But something like sundering is very appropriate because you can make potions from it. This basically is the reverse of resistance. Let's take this target dummy here. I'm going to put it down in place and then we're going to try splashing some resistance and sundering potions on it appropriately. Now I've got a regular netherite axe, so when I hit this, it does 10 points of damage, right? Doesn't matter as long as I wait for it to fully recharge. So let's toss in the potion of sundering. Yeah, I meant to throw that out of my inventory. I was just testing you guys. Let's actually throw this down. And now we have Sundering on the target, which means we'll do 20% more damage. So there we go, 12 damage. Very simple. If we use a potion of resistance against them and then try that same weapon, it should bring it back down to 10. Using just resistance on the dummy would then allow me to do 8 damage, which is a 20% increase. So you can see that you can have both effects, which would then negate each other. Next, we're going to be covering Ancient Knowledge. Now, this is a potion effect that can be applied in multiple ways, but it's one way that you can get a lot of XP. You may have noticed something like the uh, Alexandria bookshelves or even some of the higher enchants required a tremendous amount of levels, and my character currently has 493 of them. Now, there's a regular Knowledge Potion and there's a Knowledge 2 Potion. The Knowledge Potion would multiply your XP gain by 4. So if you were to gain 1 XP, you would instead gain 4. If you use the Knowledge 2 benefit, you would then gain 8 times as much while under the benefits of this potion. It can be very useful, and I will show you how you can actually make that a more permanent effect. But first, I've got these special Violent Netherite Swords of Space and Time. I have two of them, one of which has Knowledge of the Ages 3, the other one does not. This is a different effect. These are potions of ancient knowledge, which stack with that. So if you have something that is giving you extra XP, for example, a Knowledge of the Ages 3 sword, which would then convert all drops into extra XP, then you multiply that by either 4 or 8 times, you're getting yourself a considerable amount of XP. So let's go over here and do a little bit of testing so you can see a little bit about how you can get a lot of XP. If I put down a husk in this little test chamber, shall we say, and I use my first sword of space and time, and it does not have any kind of XP benefits on it. You can see my current level is not that high. It, it actually, the, the XP I gained from that didn't even move. Putting down another one and using the sword of space and time that has the... Uh, Knowledge of the Ages 3 on it. That one, of course, will convert any drops into extra XP. And it gave me something that I actually saw a movement on there, uh, a little bit on my XP bar. Let me drink this Potion of Ancient Knowledge 2, which now lasts me for a good minute. 
spawn myself another husk, and I use the original sword without the extra XP benefits on it, and it gets me a bit of XP that's actually moving the, the health bar. Now if I use mine with the uh, special knowledge ability on this sword, Knowledge of the Ages 3, combined with this potion, it definitely moves up considerably more. Now if I use this with a spawner, for example, that will spawn a lot of mobs rather quickly, then I can get myself... Oh, perfect, you're landing right on top of it. I'm going to just get out the way and just wait for them to come to me and just reel in the XP. And you can see how even at level 493, which doesn't... It seems like you it would take forever to get XP. It doesn't really take that long, especially when you've got yourself set up with a proper, uh, you know, like spawner here. Now this one here is pretty well maxed out with a lot of different stats and everything, but you could just stand on top of it and kill things that have no AI, no sound, and constantly are spawning, giving you just huge amounts of XP really fast. Now the potions of ancient knowledge are actually made from bottles of enchanting though, which you probably will have to get through villager trades or even infusion chanting of honey bottles. And while this can be expensive with uh, varied amounts of XP, you see here it costs three XP levels just to make one. And of course, if you do a, a, a more advanced enchanting setup, you can get yourself 32 per. You probably only need a few of these potions to create them. I would say try and aim for at least three of them so that you can make a potion charm. Before I delve into the potion charms real briefly, there are new potion recipes for absorption, luck, mining fatigue, resistance, wither, and haste. And they all do pretty much exactly what you expect. The only thing is absorption does not re-add itself. It just gives you those hearts to start with. But jumping into potion charms, these are made with a bit of blaze powder, three of the same type of potion, and three more blaze powder. And, and that gives you a potion charm. And these will last considerably longer than the three potions combined. So if, for example, if I were to use three one minute potions, it would last a lot longer than just three minutes. It would potentially last as far as 12 minutes or maybe as low as six, but it's going to at least give you a big bonus to it. Of course, you are using a little bit more blaze powder, but if you have the right spawner, that's not really an issue. Now there's apotheosis charms for just about every potion type in here. Now it doesn't mean that there's going to be uh, every single level or anything like that, but you will find several that are useful. For example, I have a lot of uh, enchantments and abilities on my armor that gives me so much speed that I find it actually hard to hold still. So funny thing, I've got a slowness four permanent charm in my uh, curio slot just so that I can walk around at a normal speed, and then I can run really fast when I want to. But you can have multiples, and it doesn't just have to be your curio slot. This is just a spot you can store one once activated. Let's go with a charm of speed for starters. If I were to make these with just three potions of swiftness, and I right click it, it turns it on. You can see that I am now a little bit hasted. I still have my slowness effect from my permanent charm, but I also have speed going on as well. You'll notice it gives it in very small doses. This is how it's actually kind of extending your uh, potions instead of just drinking it all at once. You're getting little tiny injections into yourself. And you don't have to hold it. You don't have to have it in your offhand. You just have to have it in your inventory or in your curio slot if you're really strapped for space. But once this thing runs out, it breaks and disappears and is broken forever. So you're probably going to want to do a little something extra with this charm of speed. Or whichever charm you want in this case. Going back to episode 3 and jumping into the enchanting section a little bit more, you'll notice I've made some good use of melon shelves. And they are quite useful indeed because you can use them to make things appropriate for the levels that you need in order to make these charms permanent. If you look up the use of these in their infusion and chanting, you can see that just with a, a maxed out Eterna, a bit of Quanta, you have a very small area that you get to use this with, and a lot of Arcana, which uh, there is still a little bit of a variable area that you can use, you can then make it unbreakable, as you can see here. It does require you to have at least 100 levels. This is why I showed you that knowledge potion to start with. And it will take away three levels at a time every time that you do this. But once you've achieved this, you can then get yourself quite a lot of extra effects. For example, let's go with haste two. 
Strength 2. Absorption 4. Speed. Knowledge 2. Water breathing. And I just need to have them in my inventory, and I have all these effects permanently ongoing. That's... that's it. And yes, it's that... that good. Uh, yeah, you can fill your inventory with all sorts of positive, or if you really want to, negative effects. You could always make one as a joke for a friend and perhaps make a withering one that's permanent and just kind of throw that in their inventory. But hey, you know, that's up to you if you really want to spend those wither skulls. Now, if for some reason you do have a charm that has a durability and you do want to end it like you're not using it anymore, for example, I've got a water breathing charm, you could always just right click and turn it off uh, and that will save its durability from being constantly being used. Uh, but each one, it's not like they will apply, like when you jump into lava for fire resistance or something, it doesn't just apply it when that happens, it's constantly applying it over and over again, just a tiny bit at a time. So you will have to disable it uh, when you don't want it in use. Best benefit of having these permanent effects is that you do not get the particles. I do not see any around me, I don't have anything removing the particles either, so that's that's just wonderful. So remember that bleeding uh, effect that I talked about earlier? Uh, we're actually going to cover that next with the village module. This adds in fletching and of course changes a little something with the wandering trader. We'll, we'll cover that in a second. Let's go in with the fletching here. There's new options and the fletching table is actually usable. So when you right click on it, you have this area here and you can make things like broadhead arrows that apply a bleeding effect. You can also use it to make iron mining arrows, which requires an iron pick and you get 12. Diamond mining arrows, which requires a diamond pick, and you get 24. An explosive arrow with a radius of 2, which requires fire charges and gunpowder, plus regular arrows. Or an obsidian arrow, which does 20% more damage than a standard arrow just by using obsidian. So putting down a target here and aiming at it with my broadhead arrow, you can see we've got a husk. Normally they would be immune to something like a poison effect, but they are instead being affected by bleeding. This also penetrates armor 100%, so you don't need to worry about some heavily armored enemy or boss or something like that uh, kind of negating any kind of damage in that case. Using the obsidian arrows that do 20% more damage, you can see this guy's got full health. If I aim at him, he's going to be taking a little bit more damage than he normally would, but keep in mind the arrows still do have a little bit of uh, variance in their overall damage output. And of course, who can forget the explosive arrow? Let's just back up a little. And you can see it works to wonderful effect, uh, though it may also destroy your terrain. And here we have the iron mining and the diamond arrows that I had mentioned earlier. Let's actually use some of these. You can see we've got iron mining arrows, which will mine iron equivalent items. So you can use them to just mine through large areas of blocks. And yes, diamond works the same way. For example, if I just kind of aim through here, it follows the arc of the arrow, so you are going to have to be aware that it might go above or below where you're actually aiming. And I'm in survival right now, this is just instantly mining these blocks. But if I were to use something like the iron arrow on something like obsidian, it just kind of bounces off. Whereas the diamond arrow will actually work on the obsidian blocks, so it's... <laughs> It's really handy and cool to use when you need to get through a very thick wall or something heavy duty really quick. Now there is also the wandering trader changes. Uh, now most wandering traders are going to be rather boring with their st selection, you know, that you might get the occasional cool item. Uh, but I took the liberty of spawning a few down here with no uh, AI, so they are going to hold still and they're also going to be rather quiet until I click on them. But you'll see that they've got some new trades, perhaps some better ones like a diamond, for example, or even some that are slightly enhanced with uh, different ad with the adventure module. Continuing on, you might find something like the rune forged items, which are quite powerful diamond enchanted gear that will have a decent amount of uh, enchantment level on them. You just need to give him the diamonds for it and some emeralds, and he'll enchant them for you. Now you will still get some poopy stuff here on occasion, so don't be surprised, but you also might find something like skulls or other items of use. And continuing on, look, we've got something here, Eternal Vigilance. You'll get some special named uh, weapons or armor that may also prove useful as you progress throughout at the cost of just, like I said, some emeralds and diamonds. So at least the uh, Wandering Traders do have potential for some better trades at this point.
And speaking of villages, let's talk about Pickles. Pickles here, uh, Pickles Jr. to be more specific, because, well, we all saw Pickles didn't make it in the first Apotheosis videos. But uh, Pickles is my new horse, uh, Junior, that is. And I'm going to punch Pickles right into my lead. That's right, an ender lead. It's made with a regular lead and pearl and gold ingot. And I can take my horse with me. And all I need to do is right click and it comes back. Uh, and in this case, it's actually still attached to the leash or, or to this lead area here. But all you need to do is just punch any kind of farm animal type creature and you can take it with you. It does use a little bit of the durability of your ender lead, but I mean, they're not really that expensive, especially if apotheosis is in there altogether. So this is a really, really nice way of just moving them around and trying to use them on villagers or wandering traders doesn't work. So don't even try it. Now, admittedly, the Ender Lead is actually part of the Garden Module uh, it, when you look in here. So I do apologize for getting that mixed up. But it does kind of lead into uh, <laughs> lead into the next section, which is the Garden Module quite nicely. And that is that uh, sugarcane can grow as high as 255 blocks up. <laughs> that's, as you saw at, at the beginning intro, that, that's quite a long way. And then you just break it and they'll all come crashing down. Um, but also cactus by default will grow up to five blocks and bamboo will grow up to 32-ish blocks. Uh, yeah, and by 32-ish, I mean, they always have a staggered variation for the uh, for the, the height, but um, it, that's about it. Otherwise they'll hover around the 32 block height. And these are all configurable. You don't have to have these. If you don't like this, uh, as with most things in apotheosis it's highly modular that's why they're in modules and have a lot of customization you can just turn these things off if you really don't want to and there you have it that should pretty much get you squared away with the different modules that there are available in apotheosis i hope you enjoyed this series if so please be sure to give a like comment subscribe come visit us on twitch click the notification bell on either platform and until next time folks i'll see ya